Hi, this is Henry Winkler. Uh, hi, this is David K. Harbour. Hey, Debbie Gibson here. Hi, this is Chaz Palminteri, and you're listening to Marta on the Move. You better listen. I'm your host, Marta Mazzoni. Join us as we connect culturally through food, drink, travel, and entertainment. This episode was made possible from our friends over at Campari America and Natrona Bottling, maker of Red Ribbon Sodas, located in Pittsburgh, PA. Natrona Bottling manufactures Jamaica's finest ginger beer and a whole line of sodas, mixers for your drinks, all that, and then some over at natronabottling.com. Also, with the help of Campari America, Campari is one of my favorite drinks to have ever, and they helped make this episode possible. Over at campariamerica.com, people in Pittsburgh, listen up. Campari and Natrona Bottling have put together an awesome swag bag for you. I have one, two, I'm looking at them right now. One, two, three, four, five swag bags to give away full of Campari America swag. So we have hats, there's um, candles, there's a drink stir, there's all kinds of stuff in this bag. And the bag in and of itself is pretty stinking cool. There's also some items from Natrona bottling in there, some some sodas. They put it all in there in the swag bag, which you can win if you tag three friends in the comments. And we are playing, we're gonna play this game over on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, we'll give it about a week and a half, two weeks, and I'll draw some names out of a hat. Five names, five swag bags, and you have to pick it up. That's why it's in Pittsburgh. You're gonna pick it up at uh, a location of my choosing in Pittsburgh. So I hope you play along. Thank you guys so much for making this episode possible. CampariAmerica.com and NatronaBottling.com. Also, if you didn't know, we've gone to video a little bit, people. So you can see this episode in video over on the website, MartaOnTheMove.com. Check out the video, listen to the podcast. It's, they're both like so much fun. You guys are the greatest. Enjoy the show. Hey guys, welcome back to Marta on the Move. Today I bring with me to the show none other than TLC's Trading Spaces, Paige Davis. Hey, welcome to the show. I think you want me to give you design ideas, but I can't do that. Oh no, you're I, fine. I can't, I'm not under surveillance. I won't be shot or anything. I'm allowed to give you design advice. I, I just don't. It's not like a secret or anything. I can tell you, but then I have to kill you. No, I um, but I don't know if I have any. Everybody I don't see that. I don't. I don't see that. I because I was on Trading Spaces, but I was the host, and I just escorted the experts through to the homeowners. I was really more identifying with the homeowners who were not the experts. And in fact, when the producers would tell the designers that they had to give me a project, the designers would pitch fits because I ruined everything I ever tried to do for them. So <laughs> wait a minute. So that was one of my questions about trading spaces was if you coming to the show, if you had any sort of experience with DIY projects. Zip. And, really? I, and I don't like DIY either. I, I love interior design and I love decorating and I love design and I appreciate it very much. And I can usually um, tell the difference between good design and poor design, not just necessarily different tastes or good taste over bad taste or my taste over someone else's taste. Okay. That's all subjective, but good design over, I can usually spot and understand but I don't really have that talent myself. My mom, her like one of her like greatest passions is interior design. And in fact, she'd gone to school for it and it considered maybe okay. like pursuing a career or something like that. And it, that's not what happened for her, but she did study it. And I remember being a young girl and kind of getting, you know, watching her go through the motions in our homes. Like every time we moved, you know, making her, husband's or my she was married 
a couple times, a few times, um, but uh, making them do different projects around the house with her, like, you know, the honeydew list was pretty extensive when it came to my mom because she had a lot of vision and a lot of dreams and, you know, wanted them to come to fruition. And she was very into the idea of being able to do it yourself or her husband's being able to help her do it. <laughs> So I watched her do it and I, and I loved her passion and I had an eye for it. And I remember going to fabric stores with her and textile stores with her and um, picking things out and watching her paint and create on walls and do different things that were less expensive and still really incredibly creative. So I love that stuff, but I don't really want to do that stuff myself. I'm a how, did you, how did you end up getting the, the was, gig for trading spaces then. I have a really, really close friend. Her name is Risa Saslow and she's one of my best friends. And way back when, you know, over 20 years ago, she was working at Banyan Productions, which is the production company that made trading spaces. She knew they were looking for a host for trading spaces. And in fact, to uh, replace the original host. So I'd heard of the show. I knew the show existed. I was aware of the neighbor swapping. I was aware that it was a decorating show of some kind. It was a British show, right? It was originally a show. It's based on a show Changing. called Changing Rooms. Changing Rooms, yeah. But it had aired in on daytime television on TLC uh, for a year. And, but it aired at the same time as Oprah. So although I'd seen commercials for it a lot when I was watching TLC, I'd never actually seen the show itself. But I knew what it was. And she did not work for Training Spaces. She did other shows for them. Like um, she produced a wedding story and then event eventually produced ours. Um, and she also produced, um, I think, a makeover story. She did mm. makeover. Remember those? Yeah. Makeover story, dating story, wedding story, baby story. Yep. Um, so she'd heard and they the felt world. so authentic. You know, they, they were. were they felt so much reality more. Reality television really was reality television back then. And She'd heard the water cooler talk. They'd be looking for a new host. And she called screaming into my answering machine. Hello, answering machines. That's how long ago this was. <laughs> and she was like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. They're looking for a host for the show, and you are perfect for it. And I called her back, and I'm like, well, um, I've never done TV. I've never hosted anything, and I don't have a background in interior design. So how exactly am I perfect for this show? She was like, I just know it. And she just pushed me and pushed me and pushed me. She was relentless uh, trying to get me an audition. One, to get me to push for one. And two, she was going to the executive producer who was a friend of hers, a dear friend of hers, and saying, you've got to see this girl, my friend. And the EP, her name was Denise Cramsey. Bless her. She's since passed away. But she was like, oh, great. You have a friend awesome and she's like no you don't understand like what if her agent called and Denise was like she has an agent and she's like she's in the business I told you she's in the business she does theater you have to see her and still nothing nothing oh. I ended up no calls no nothing. Did you nothing. audition at this point nothing. or was it like nothing and I ended up calling the general manager of TLC her name was Jana Bennett and I left a, a, a message for her on her voicemail saying, you know, hey, um, you know, I understand that my resume doesn't reflect television experience, but please understand that I have, you know, back then already 17 years of experience in the business. Mm -hmm. And I really believe that my training and improv and my background in theater is ideally suited to what I understand is an unscripted show. And I would just like a chance to be seen. So, cause it's like, how do you get an audition for TV? If you have to have TV to get an audition. And it's like, I wasn't trying to audition for NBC's fall lineup. Yeah. You know, I was just trying to audition for a pissing at cable network called TLC that really wasn't even on the map yet. <laughs> well, I mean, just like, I mean, really like, yeah, no, how, it's do you, true. how do you start in anything if you can't even be given a shot yeah. to just get your foot in the door. And at a certain point, I think, it became the Achilles heel of like, well, I'm going to get an audition. Like I never thought I would book it by any stretch of the imagination, never in a million years. But I just thought really like, you're not even going to let me show up. Like that's kind of rude. Yeah. that's like, Especially when I'm clearly like really asking, like I'm really pushing, you know? So, um, any hoodle, I went down and I was told, 
I could come down to Philadelphia because that's where Banyan Productions was. Okay. And they would see me at the end if there was time. Awesome. So you would, you would come there. I went down there. I took the train from New York to Philly. And I got there about halfway through the day. You know, I didn't get there at eight in the morning like an idiot. But, you know, I got there like after lunchtime. Mm-hmm. And I just waited. And um, I could tell right away that the executive producer who was from TLC, not Banyan Productions, but from TLC, I could tell that he'd taken quite an interest in me right away. And I still didn't think that actually meant anything. I just thought it would mean, oh, he'll give me a shot. Yeah. He'll and it, it was true because they'd come to the end of the day, they would packed up all the equipment. And he said, you haven't seen this lady. And Denise said, we're, we're already, pa- we're over time. We're past due. Um, we're into overtime with the crew. And he said, I'll pay it. Oh, wow. I you to put her on tape. You had like a little fairy godfather. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then I, I, after I auditioned, it became, it became clear that something changed in the room. Hmm. And I thought, oh, that, that went well. I still didn't think I would get it, but I thought that went well. And what did I, you do for the audition? Was it, was it just a very, I had to uh, do a lot of pretend stuff. So that is where I, you know, here's what's so friggin' sad is I really haven't kept up my improv skills in the way that I should have. I did train, I trained for three years in improv, but, um, my, my God, that was 25 years ago. So, um, I really haven't kept up my skills, but it really came in handy because I just had to pretend that I was doing this stuff. Like we were in a home. Um, I don't know who's home, probably somebody who worked at Banyan Productions. I don't know. And I had to pretend that I was opening the show. So I had to like kind of write that on my own. Like, hi, I'm, you know, I'm Paige Davis. Welcome to Trading Spaces. Today we have Natalie and Tim and they're going to be trading with so-and-so and so-and-so. She hates purple, but what will happen to her? You know, like, I, I don't know. I just made it up. And then I had to, uh, Ty Pennington was there and he was auditioning with all the women. And they had this fireplace mantle and he was pretending to work on the fireplace mantle. And I had to go in, like kind of walk into scene and be like, Hey, what you doing with this fireplace mantle? And then improv with him. And he was wonderful. He's so, his imagination is so just splendiferous that it's very easy to improv with him. And he was definitely the right person to have auditioning with all these women because he can be so free and go with the flow and do anything, you know, and then I had to, um, they had some uh, PAs who pretended to be neighbors, essentially. And I had to escort them into a room with their eyes closed and say, open your eyes. And then just kind of like improv what they were seeing. And they had to improv too. I mean, they had to pretend like, and I had, if they were like, what are those curtains? I'd be like, oh, <laughs> the curtains, right. Like, I had to like go with that. Like whatever they said I had to do. And um And so it was pretty fun, actually. I mean, a little scary because you're auditioning and you're being judged, but it was basically fun. And then I left and I actually rode the train back to New York with Ty Pennington. And he said, oh, you're totally going to get it. I was like, you don't understand. I'm not going to get it. I'm really happy that I made a good impression. And I think that if I ever want to audition for TLC or any Discovery Network's networks because they have a uh, their discovery mm-hmm. umbrella their right umbrella. it won't be like blood under my fingernails clawing my way into the audition right so I felt that that was a real win for me and I was really happy and sure enough I didn't get it and they proceeded to audition like another 50 some odd women and well, you didn't get it I didn't know that I didn't get it and they went on to audition many more women a lot more women. And uh, it turns out that Jaina Bennett, who to her credit, I think she may have been the only one who actually knew what she was sitting on Hmm. and she didn't want to risk it to someone with no experience. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, She kept refusing to hire me and everybody else at Banyan and at TLC who had been at the audition kept refusing to hire anybody else. Ooh, what a and stalemate. They basically wore her down. Um, Steven Schwartz, who is the wonderful EP from Trading Spaces, who really believed in me and thought that I was the right choice, he actually 
um, brought me up to Westchester, his house in Westchester. And uh, I'm not not looking at you. I'm forced quitting my mail, so don't we don't keep <laughs> dings. I get it. I get it. Uh, I had a ding earlier. I'm like, oh crap! Oh crap! <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, he did like a callback situation. Like he hired out of his own pocket, a cameraman, a sound guy, a grip. He forced his in-laws who happened to be visiting at the time, pretend to be neighbors. And we did a whole new open, a whole new thing where open, you know, open your eyes. And he made his in-laws be neighbors. And he turned in that tape. And Jana Bennett said, um, I liked the first tape. I didn't need it. She's adorable. I, I get it. I get it. But how do I know she can handle an entire series? Ah. So they just finally just wore her down and she said, okay, I'll give her a chance, but I'm only guaranteed. I was guaranteed eight episodes of pay, not eight oh. episodes to air. Oh, okay. So just a trial mm -hmm. just to see how they turn out. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I remember getting a call from Denise. Uh, we were, we were shooting our eighth episode and we were in Boston and she said, um, this was like literally right before 9-11, mm -hmm. like right before. And I remember she said, um, you know, we need to book your travel for the next city. And I said, well, Denise, I haven't heard yet if I'm going on to the next city. She's like, what are you talking about? I said, well, this is the eighth episode. I've not been told whether I'm picked up for future episodes or not. And she's like, well, of course you... I'll call you back. And I was like, oh my God, there's actually a question. <laughs> there's really a question. Oh my God. I mean, I, I never sweat. So, I mean, boy, I sweat bullets for that hour. I yeah. like, it was an hour. And she finally called me back and she was like, ah, let's book that travel, girl. <laughs> so. Oh my goodness. And the rest is history. Yeah. What a magical story. And that, that I mean, that the cool thing about trading spaces was that it definitely paved the way for all of these shows that you see. Uh, and they're kind of like a dime a dozen, you know, it changed the landscape of television a hundred percent in so many ways. You know, I, I think it's funny. I didn't mean to bring up nine 11, but I think it comes up for me a lot because I do think one of the things that is, of the countless lightnings in a bottle that made trading spaces be kind of the cultural phenomenon that it was, was that it, um, we were shooting at that time, but it hadn't, those episodes hadn't aired yet. Everyone started nesting, you know, no one was traveling. Everyone was bringing their families in tight, you know, that terrorist attack really changed our country. Um, I, I wish it had changed us a little more permanently, actually. But at the time, we were so bonded and so close, and families were just, like, really nesting. It was the boom of Home Depot. It was the boom of Lowe's. It was the, you know, boom of DIY. And Trading Spaces kind of came at that exact same time. And it was the first time that a decorating show or a design show or a how-to show put the it wasn't the experts only doing it like a bob vila or a mm -hmm. martha stewart it put the tools in the hands of the homeowner and if susie down the block could do it maybe i could do it you know and that coinciding with wanting to nest i think really was a big part of buoying the success, everybody wanting to stay home. Plus it was a family show. People wanted to sit with their families. It was a show you could watch with your kids and not be embarrassed. It was a show your kids could watch with you and not be mortified. And it just brought everybody together, you know? Uh, what, what an interesting way to kind of look at that because I, I mean, we're in that once again. Yeah. You know I, mean? I mean, we're here once again. And it's one of the reasons uh, when I was talking with Patrick last week, I was like, uh, I want to have page on because this is, this is the time where everybody is, has like a billion projects because they have nothing else to do. <laughs> They're like, I'm finally going to tackle 
that corner that's been sitting for, and they are nesting. Yeah, and you know what, and I think people are tackling projects. I think it's important, you know, look, I've seen every meme, we all have. The memes that are like, you know, Shakespeare wrote King Lear during the plague. What's your problem? You know, and I've seen the memes that say, be gentle on yourself. You don't have to solve the world's problems, you know, sitting at home today. And I think having, you know, I don't know if it's because I'm a Libra, but I see both sides of that. And I think it's important that on any given day or frankly, <laughs> or frankly minute or week, you just ride it out. And when you feel a burst of pr- productivity, go for it. And if you don't, don't. You know, I thought you were a Libra. Yes, I am also. I am. Yeah, and I always <laughs> see both sides to everything. It's not good. No, I know it's, it's not. We, we are in a situation that people don't understand. We see the flip side of every coin and we yes. try and balance every, everyone else. It's exhausting. It's exhausting. It is absolutely <laughs> mind blowingly exhausting. I say it all really the time, is. like, Patrick is frustrated with me. I'm like, it's no picnic in here for me either. I'll trade you any day. Yep. Yep. Yeah. People don't get it. And I'm sure other signs have their quirks, but you know, Libras. That's ours. Yeah. I know. Well, so what have you, what have you been, I know you're back in New York. I right. haven't really done a whole lot. <laughs> have you been dancing at least? Uh, I've been trying. I think I could probably dance a little easier here. We were in Avalon. Okay. If people follow your podcast. You probably heard from Patrick. We were social distancing and, and quarantining and, and holding up, holding up, holding up, holding up works uh, down in Avalon, New Jersey, which is down the shore. So like South of Atlantic city, South of ocean city. Okay. And um, you know, in the winter, that's where my parents live and it's like empty down there. So it's a, it was a very safe place to be. And in fact, Patrick had thought of this a long time ago when bird flu was happening. And then even with nine 11 and terrorist attacks, like we should have a plan in place where we go to your parents' house in Avalon. Cause it's nowhere, you know, he was talking about that. I couldn't believe that he had a bug out bag. Straight up. Yeah, I don't well, know. You know, complete, like, like, I don't know how, complete, I don't know how complete that bag is, but <laughs> he, he did have the masks. Um, he did have the masks. We do have crank, uh, flashlights. Um, he did buy Tamiflu, which I'm not oh, sure yeah. if it's expired or not, but I think a lot of stuff is still good. Even after it's expired, yeah. I would take the it. suggested best it. buy. What? It's a suggested best buy date. Yeah. Yes, right. Um, and we had gloves, and um, which I found aren't really as necessary, actually, because once you contaminate the glove, you still got to wash the glove. It, I tell everyone this. I think gloves can come in handy, and I think we have them. And I mean, I think I'm, gl- I'm glad we have them, but I don't, initially I was using them, and then I realized, oh, this is just ecologically irresponsible because these aren't helping me. If they were actually helping, yeah. I would do it. I would protect myself, but they're not. So it's, I've stopped using them. And yeah. sometimes I just maybe carry them with me in case something comes up where I'm like, oh, really glad I have these gloves, you know, but I'm, I don't use them. Honestly, I work like full-time job. I work in food service distribution. Like my, my family owns a food service distributor. So I've been dealing with all the restaurants. Mm-hmm. Gloves are not going to be a thing because they're running out they can't manufacture them fast enough and they're they're not just wash your hands just wash your hands just Just wash wash your hands hands. you know um that's the really important thing so i mean it's good now i would have a little more space to dance i think um here i've got a little bit bigger space in this front room where i wouldn't like kick something like i mean I, i could extend my leg out and not hit something um, I could do that at my parents' house too, but not in any area that wouldn't bother them. Okay. Right. I'd have to ask them to pause their lives in order for me to do it. So here I might be able to, but I have been working out. Oddly, there's more room to work out. than I was going to ask you about that because I know, you know, a, it, it's probably a Libra thing, honestly. But um, when this all started, when I wasn't working out as mo- often as I was, I started to have the dip in my mental 
clarity. And I know that you are like that, very much like that. Well, and I really worry about my weight, probably way more than anybody should. I, I definitely worry about what my body looks like. Um, maybe not more than anybody should, but potentially um, it's just this business is really hard, Marta. Yeah. It's just really, really hard. And, you know, it's no joke. The camera adds 10 pounds. And okay. when I am around people in television, I notice that I'm pretty mammoth and I'm a really decent size. Like yeah, I, I'm, I'm in great shape. That's what I'm saying. I'm in great shape. My body is awesome. But when I go to Los Angeles, I'm telling you, Marta, when I go to Los Angeles, I am literally three times the size of these girls. So who cares? They, the, the, I care because I want to book work, Marta. Yes, but you're beautiful. You're well, beautiful that's, just that's the way you are. And and that's very lovely, but it messes with your head. And I also, love that we're having a Libra are, session right now, but you are dancer, beautiful because also, it's very you. difficult as a dancer as well. Uh, you want to have certain lines. You want to look a certain way. Um, I definitely also stay very fit so that I can dance to the best yeah. of my ability. So that's a big part of it too. And that's not irrational and that's not silly. So, um, well, it's all of it, you know, it's all of it. So if I'm not working out, it can start to mess with my mind on a whole lot of levels. One, you're not getting the endorphins. No. Two, you're feeling shame. Yeah. Three, you're feeling ugly. Yeah. Um, exercise is really important and people should exercise to their ability and nobody should compare themselves with anybody else in a healthy world. I'm not suggesting that what Absolutely I true. think or what I feel is best suited to anyone. Yeah. But, um, well, let me ask really you, grateful. I know so, while you're so, so, so grateful to the fitness gurus and people who have been offering their services for free yeah, you know a lot of them huge. will say okay well if you want to do it this extended class it's like you know ten dollars or whatever you join the zoom and that's cool too i think that's great but everybody's also doing a lot of real generosity like real generous giving of spirit to keep people healthy and motivated and i just i'm like i'm really moved by that yeah, I, I agree with you. And I, you know, it was funny because I was thinking about that a lot before we recorded and, and knowing the, the way that you are and the way that I am. I was thinking of you guys in New York and I was trying to find um, a fun way to cheer you up. Um, so with the help of some friends, I wanted, and I knew you probably can't see your friends a lot, so I wanted to bring on some of your friends um, <laughs> uh, in a little game, because I also know you like games. <laughs> so, uh, Rodney definitely helped me set this up. And <laughs> yeah, we wanted to bring on some of your friends for a little two truths and a lie. You were probably wondering why I texted you to text me two, two truths and a lie. Yeah, Patrick was like, oh, I didn't have to do that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's mad. So these guys were so quick to get back and get back. <laughs> They were lightning fast. Hello, everybody. Hi, guys. Hi, Paige. Hi, Paige. Hi, Paige. <laughs> I'm living for this silver streak you've got right now. Oh, it's, it's beautiful. Streak. No, it's streak my ass. It's my whole head. Oh, can I say that? <laughs> oh, yeah. You're fabulous. Fine. It's fabulous. It's totally fabulous. You're like Rogue from the X Men. <laughs> Yeah, Diana, which she's Here. got. <laughs> Diana's Anne, like copy very copy. Anne Bancroft. <laughs> so we. Am I the only one here with a drink? Oh no, I have. If you are, oh, Diana's got one. <laughs> okay, all right. Cheers, everybody. Chin chin. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> um. So, Paige. Let's go. I had. I believe. Do. I believe. 
I, I could be wrong, Ben, but I think that you were at my house when you saw the new Fresca can for the first time. And I flipped my lid, didn't I? <laughs> I went positively wild. Because look, it's kind of art deco. He was Ooh. like, what is this? I haven't seen this can. It's a new design. I go, this, I know. It's pretty Miami looking. It's, it's so pretty. beautiful, <laughs> isn't it? Well done, Fresca. Yes, that was at your apartment. Well done. <laughs> So Paige, I had, I know you're a fan of games, just <laughs> all of, like me. Um, so I had each of your close friends do two truths and a lie. And I'm going to have them, starting with Ben, start you off that you might have to guess the lie. Oh, okay. All right. For, I, I, chose, have... I chose well, because actually these are like, Marta, these are some of my like, dearest, closest like, I mean, like my inner circle friends, and there is a strong possibility they don't know the answer to these. Mm -hmm. So we, I just I don't know. I'm, excited. I'm excited just reading, because I've gotten to read all of your answers. I'm, I'm so pumped to see which are real and which are not. Okay. Okay. Ben? So I'm, I'm doing mine, right? Yes. Okay, great. So I uh, shouldn't respond until everybody's had a chance, right? Well, Paige, you're the only person that's going to respond to, uh, we can guess, but you're the only person that's going to respond to to your friends' ones to see which one you think is the lie. Oh, they have three too. Yeah. Oh, oh no, I'm on the spot. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I just got it. I just got it. I just got it. Oh, no. Oh, no. I just oh. have to ask, Stuart, are you in a bistro? Right? Are you on a beach? I mean, a, come on. Are you in a cafe or is that your kitchen? I know, it looks like a tiki hut. That's our kitchen. Oh my um, God. It, I it, should come and cook in your house. Uh, yeah, right? Any time, Lisa, any time. <laughs> it's just, it, Lisa's it, a caterer, Marta. Uh, oh. I, I just, and, a, and a cook and a home, a home and, and, private and, and chef. An all around fabulous person. Um, no, I, I had to use this as the background because it's like one of the few spaces in the new apartment that's been finished so <laughs> well it's absolutely glorious and Paige you have many books thank you okay all right okay, you go first I'm so scared oh my god three, three <laughs> things about me one of them is a lie all right first when I was a kid um some new neighbors moved in and I befriended the kid who lived there and I told him that uh everybody called me Zim which stood, was, stood for Zimbabwe Ben, because I thought that was really cool and I wanted him to call me Zim. And um, then eventually he called me Zim in front of people who knew me and they're like, why is he calling you Zim? So that's one. Okay. I'm deranged. Uh, I once played a singing Captain America at a children's birthday party and I had to sing God Bless America and Hero by Enrique Iglesias. <laughs> And this was after I had been in three Broadway shows. <laughs> okay. And finally, Paige, I once screamed fuck at the top of my lungs in the middle of an audition for a Broadway show because my pants ripped in the crotch. And I was surprised to find that I did not get kept past that round. I am going to- One of these is a lie. I'm gonna say, I'm just playing psychological games with myself. Hmm. I'm going to say that. <laughs> I think the fuck thing is true. The which one? The fuck thing is true. Okay. I can't verify until you make your choice. Oh. <laughs> that was a good test though. <laughs> yeah. she's like waiting she's like which is like the other two are so random that it's either i think they're both true it's just which one is true for you i have a feeling one of them is true for somebody you know like you know somebody either did that like made you call them zim or you heard some you heard this story from somebody or you know somebody who after doing multiple broadway shows had to sing Cap captain america because it's too specific. So I just don't know which one is true for you. Make your choice. So I'm gonna say that the Captain America one is true for you. 
Okay. So Marta, when do I when do I reveal my truth? So that means which one is the lie? That's the I'm first one. I'm gonna say one. the Zimbabwe one is the, is the lie. All right, Ben. Do I come? Because I'll tell you why I said that. Yeah, because yeah. I know you you will do any job. Let's hear it. <laughs> you are literally the most industrious person I know in the entire <laughs> world, and you'd be like, you know what? If you pay me, I will give my heart and soul to this. <laughs> I, you know, I need the money, and I'm I'm sing good, and I love kids, so I'll show up. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and say that that one could be true for you. And I'm going to just go ahead and say that the Zimbabwe one is it. Paige, the lie is Captain America. Damn it, I was so close. <laughs> and I don't know anybody who that's happened to. I completely made it up, but I kind of based it around the fact that I once had to go to Long Island um, to be Santa Claus at a, at a Christmas party at somebody's house. And it was a nightmare from hell. Okay, oh, copy that. Awful. Well done, though. Well done on the, like, the, the delivery was perfect. <laughs> All right, Diana, you are up next, my dear. Um, this will be short and sweet, as the non-performer in the group <laughs> <laughs> with super boring <laughs> truths and lie. <laughs> I have shot a hole in one. I have been in the Village Halloween Parade. Ooh. And I have seen the Aurora Borealis. Anyway, you slice it, you live a very full life. There you yes. go. <laughs> Was slice it a golf pun? No. Oh. <laughs> oh, of course. God. But between, okay, this is another thing. Diana and Stuart and my mother are like queens of the pun. And yes, I just called you a queen. <laughs> um, uh, Oh, God, I don't know. I don't know if you've seen the Aurora Borealis. I'm not sure. If you told me, I forgot. Um, so I will say that's the lie. That is not the lie. Ah! Then I, it's the hole I, in I, one I, is the lie. Incorrect. You, how could you have not been in the Halloween parade? I'm a spectator. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, that okay. was a good yeah. one. But... I mean, isn't everybody a spectator? I mean, there's not like a- That a, doesn't put you in the parade in the costume. <laughs> all right, all right. That was a good one. That was good. I've never seen the Aurora Borealis. I'm just 0 for 2. Wisconsin in the summer. Oh. Hey, I lived in Wisconsin for how six years and I never saw the Aurora Borealis. It was a little Man. before all this pollution. I'm not saying how long ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, we are going, let's go with Stuart. Okay. Um, Make oh, us an omelet. Okay. Yes. <laughs> um, the sidebar, Diana, you cut your hair or something. Uh -oh. It looks cute. It's insanely long. Really? And there I are all know. kinds of things that are happening that you won't know about for another three months. <laughs> Maybe because it's like pulled back some, but I I'm, I'm loving it. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Here are my three things. Two are true. One is a lie. Okay. I have flown on the trapeze without a net. Number two, my associate's degree in junior college was in architecture. And number three, I once owned a Burmese python named Mercutio. God, these are really hard. Ben and I have our opinions about this one. We do, we talked about it. <laughs> but I just, for the record, I just need for this python thing to be true. Me just, for me. If yeah. not, just going to make it true. <laughs> yep. I, okay, so trapeze without a net, the Python named Mercutio, and, and oh, degree in architecture. Oh, God, I don't know. Junior college degree in architecture. Um, oh, is that like a, like if I say, oh, that's, well, that's you a lie, you'll be like, it is, because I got a real, a, a regular degree. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like Patrick said, my lie should be, I kissed Matt LeBlanc, when the truth is I kissed Matthew Perry. I'm like, that's oh, not tricky. I know, right? Um, okay, I'm going to say <laughs> you haven't flown on the trapeze without a net. Yes, I have. Oh. God, I'm losing everything. <laughs> it better not be that snake. 
Did you make well, up I know thing? how much you love architecture. It's one of your favorite things in the world, but I didn't know you had any kind of degree in it. Is that true too? What, what's your guess? Well, I'm asking, I'm saying, so is that true? I don't know the answer. I have no idea. The architecture degree is a lie. Okay, that's what I wondered. So that means that Bendy wins because he was desperate for the snake to be true. The snake is real. The snake is real. The snake is real. Mercutio oh, yeah. lives. The Marla, snake so is happy. real. Yeah, where is Mercutio? Um, you don't know how old Stuart is. Mercutio died long ago. Yeah, true. Yeah, he probably did. Well, I don't know. I, don't, I had to rehome him. It was just like, Aww. this was in college. Oh, how did you come across Mercutio in the first place? I, I bought him. I found, I found him at a pet store and I had to have him. <laughs> how long was Mercutio? Oh <clears throat> ben, I think we need our own Zoom meeting. For I that. know. I was going to say, I was like. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a special lens for that. This is great. <laughs> we'll All right, Lisa. Later. All right. Two truths and a lie. I was once a contestant on The Price is Right, and I won. Oh. I once cooked for Yoko Ono. I once gave mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation to a litter of newborn puppies, which is the lie. I love these. I hope none of them. <laughs> I hope I know, none right? of them lies, yeah. I want them all to be true. Oh my frickin', I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> Let's see. Um, puppies, prices, right, Yoko Ono. I'm going to say you have not cooked for Yoko Ono. I have. Oh, yeah. <laughs> have you not been on the prices, right? No, I've been on taboo. Oh, so right was the line. You one of those. Oh. <laughs> I came really close to saying that you weren't on the prices, right? But I thought that was like, if I could have been, then you could have been. So, no. How did you cook for Yoko Ono? Yeah. I assisted a chef who was doing a dinner party there in the Dakotas. And apparently, if you're having a dinner party, Yoko's on the list. Like, literally, she kind of just hops from apartment to apartment. And there, it's That's kind of like the awesome. given. It's like, oh, yeah, Yoko's coming. Yoko, Yoko's on the way. <laughs> and I'm just like, you're kidding. I was in the kitchen the whole time. I never once went out on the floor and got to see her. So it's not like I really was like. But we made her lamb chops. And there was some mint oh. sauce. That night, this was literally like 12 years ago, but yeah, super oh, cool. Sounds good. Oh, okay, here's mine. Wait, yeah. Mark, do you have some? No, what? I don't have some. I just wanted to give, I wanted you to have retribution because I put you on the spot. So now you guys, they, they didn't know, Paige, that you have two truths and a lie. Um, so, so, so wait, Marta. I, I forget what they are. Um, so what you guys are going to do. Yeah, how do we do this? What's the rule? Okay, so keep your, keep your guesses silent and just grab, or just remember them in your head or grab a little piece of paper and write down which one each person thinks is Paige's lie. It'll be, a, it'll be like Jeopardy and you have to hold it up. Hilarious. Does everybody have paper? Yep. I do, I, I'm, I'm joining this one actually. And a Sharpie. Ready. Oh my God, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, well, these are gonna be too easy for y'all. You said we uh, don't know you. You said that these are secrets that nobody. No, but I forgot what they were. You're going to know these. You can my, fan, my fans would not know these, but I think you guys would know these. Um, I never travel. Don't. We should have Marta guess. Are you guessing first? I'll guess. Yeah. Okay. I never travel without my lavender sleep pillow. I was a go-go dancer in Prince's nightclub, Glam Slam, and I am adopted. And the first glasses to make sure I can see you guys. And I could imagine you travel with a lavender pillow for sure. Absolutely. Because you probably These don't sleep on planes. Pretty convincing, I think. I'm, I'm ready. with lavender sweet pillow. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, everybody's going, different. I didn't I'm know. going go go prince. Go go dancer. Lavender yeah. sleep pillow. Well, mine is obviously wrong. What did you put? I thought it was the last one, I didn't know you were adopted. I am technically adopted. My, 
uh, my mother divorced my biological father, and when she ma- remarried, he adopted me, and that is how I became Davis. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> so no, I'm not adopted in the traditional sense. That's why it was so tricky. Okay, so the lavender pillow. Wait, what did everybody say? Stuart, I said go-go, go-go dancer. Lavender pillow. Lavender pillow. Go-go dancer. Go-go dancer. Lavender pillow is the lie. Really? Now we need the story about you go-go dancing at yeah, Princess Yeah, is there Club. footage? Is there a photo? Well, first of all, Diana would have to have known that the lavender sleep pillow was a lie because I cannot stand it. <laughs> lavender. I How think you like lavender. Whoa. I, we, and this is a thing. Like, my friends all know that I hate all the things everybody loves. I oh, hate Mary. lavender. Oh, I hate lavender. rosemary. Black I pepper. Hate black pepper. Oh, oh, goodness. Yeah. Those That's three lovely. things especially. I detest. Whoa. Yeah. It's pretty funny. Um, and then the adopted thing I told you was uh, splitting hairs is a technicality, but it is technically true. I am legally adopted. And the, yeah, I, I was a go-go dancer at Glam Slam for a long time. Down to, it doesn't you? exist anymore. Glam Slam doesn't exist anymore, but Prince uh, what, owned it. And was this it was in Minneapolis? A, it's a nightclub in, no, in LA, in downtown LA. LA. When, when downtown LA was Mm-hmm. Are there any photos of this? Yeah, no. I didn't see any photos. I would have I would have looked. This was like in 1990. Let me think for a second. If I graduated school and then it was before what? cell phones. It would have had to have been like yeah, right? 92, 92, 93, probably. Aren't, aren't some of us thankful we lived a lot of our life before everyone had a cell phone in their pocket? Yes. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. But he used to watch me from the um you know, uh, he'd pull back a curtain. He had like a room that was up high. And whenever oh. I was dancing, he was always watching. I was told all the time, he watches you. I thought that meant something. It meant absolutely nothing. I mean, it meant something. I guess he liked the way I danced, but it never turned into being any kind of offer to like join his concert or be on, you know, get a job or anything other than go-go dancing. I just have the image of that Dave Chappelle. <laughs> Oh my God. Oh wow. Well, you know, I dance for the Beach Boys, right? Yeah. That's why I thought the go go was the lie because you've done the Beach Boys. Oh play. yeah. No. Uh, but it stemmed from that. Mm. Yeah. Wow. I was, they're, they're I was they're a dancer artists. for the Beach Boys. What? Did you try to get them to they're... change the title of Purple Rain. <laughs> <laughs> the Lavender hatred, Rain? Hatred of the color. Lavender Rain. <laughs> Lavender Rain sounds amazing. It sounds like a bath bomb. It does sound like a bath bomb. <laughs> Paige is going to get nothing but lavender bath balls, like mailed to her. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you guys for coming on. You guys are uh, absolutely the best. I love you so much. Love you. Love you. Oh, this was super fun. Bye, Bye guys. Bye. Bye. Um, yeah, they were. So let me tell you how fast your friends were like hey um we're we're ready we're we're doing it we're like yep but it was like this bing 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 and i have to thank i have to thank broad because i messaged him well i'm so surprised he wasn't one of the friends i just assumed it was going to be rod and donna and then all of a sudden they popped up and really i offered i said said, hey are you gonna come on and he's like no 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 because these are, you know, she, she's going to love that it's, that it's these four people. And he's like, you've already met all of them anyways. And, you know, it, it, it'll be great. And I'm like, all right. So, Aww. yeah, super fun. Thank but you. That was such a gift. Thank you so much. Good. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. I know social distancing is, is hard. But tell me, tell me something you're excited about. Couldn't be anything could be your dinner. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we have a busy day today. And so I've been, you know, cooking a lot since we've been home. But last night as I was falling asleep, I was thinking about how it was going to be a busy day today. And I thought maybe we'll order pizza, which would be a big deal for me because I'm not supposed to have gluten or dairy. But I thought maybe this would be the day. This day. Do you have a specific spot? Is there, is there like, 
Well, and I would like to order from a place we never have ordered from, but I had gotten a slice of this pizza a long time ago, and I realized, like, where has this been all my life? And I have a friend who lives around the corner from it, and I mentioned something to him about, like, have you ever had pizza from this Saul and Carmine's? And he was like, oh, my God, it's the greatest pizza that's ever existed. I was like, uh, yeah, it is. So... I was thinking maybe we'd order from there. But it's a little tricky right now because it's only pickup from them. But it's not far. I mean, it's easily walkable. It's just, you wonder, does it stay hot if it's not in that insulated thing on, you know? You might have to just... Guys, they bring it in the insulated thing on their bike and they get it to you real fast. It's still hot. If I got to walk up, you know, five blocks and then walk back, it might not be so hot when I get back. It's not going to be hot. But still might be good. Who's to say it'll make it all the way home? I might just eat that shit out That's of the box. I'm not going to make it all the way home. I'm not going to make it out. <laughs> not even a little bit. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. This was awesome. I, I just, I'm so happy to see your face, and I can't wait till we can dance again. Oh, I know. That was really fun. Yeah. I just want to say, you know, um, I know this is, well, I guess I'm just, I don't mean to end on a morbid no, but we were talking about trading spaces and I just would be so remiss if I didn't mention Frank, you know, um, that's been really hard. This whole, you know, I'm, I'm excited. You know what I'm excited about? I'm excited to be safe, but for when it is safe for us all to be together again, because, you know, I lost my uncle to COVID. I heard and my very, you know, he's really like, he was my first father you know my my uncle and my aunt are like another set of parents to me and I lived with them when I was a little girl and I loved them so much and he was old it's true but um it meant saying it meant losing him without being able to say goodbye without being able to be by his side hold his hand so I didn't get to be there for him for me and I didn't get to be there for him for him and that was really difficult. And then losing Frank, that's another tragedy. Uh, he didn't die of COVID, but he died way too young. But now we can't gather to celebrate him. So, you know, it's not about just being able to be together again with your friends or be able to go to a restaurant again. I'm re what I'm really looking forward to is the chance to have real connections because you underestimate the the... The importance. the importance of of those traditions and and those touchstones and those needs and I think that it's having a really profound effect on my psyche you know not just to like not see my friends but to not go through the things that are really important in life's passages you know it's definitely a time to reassess and think about what the most important things are it's it's yeah part of it is, is, is good in that way, you know, that you get that clarity and you kind of, like you said, that touch point of even inside yourself of like, oh, okay, you know what? I was go, 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 go. And now this is forcing all of us to just. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And if we can treat it like that, we'll come out a lot better on the other side, for sure. For those of us who have the luxury of treating it that way, it, it, I think, is beneficial to put yourself in that mindset. Not everybody has that luxury, but if you do and can, I think it's valuable. Yeah, it is. You are valuable. You Thank you for my surprise. That You're was welcome. everything. I love you so much. And I'm going to thank Rod right now. <laughs> thank you guys for joining the show. Find a page on at real page Davis and page Davis. Not the, not the real page Davis on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at yeah. real page Davis at real page Davis. And I'm on Marta on the move Twitter. And I can't find Marta. Yahoo! Yahoo!